Hello everyone, this is Omer and welcome back to the series of tutorials for LangyCharts.net. In this video, we'll see how to create an XY line chart. LangyChart offers many options for data visualization. So, let's start by creating a project template. For this tutorial, we will create a Windows Presentation Foundation project. We will name it as LangyChart Tutorial and finally create a project. As the project loads, we have the XML designer in focus. And on the left side, you can see some lining charts components in the toolbox. It's very important to know that if you don't have these components in your toolbox, you will have to install the lining charts SDK from our website. You can find the link in the description. So, Let's start by adding a lining chart control. We'll use the semi-linkable version of lining chart for this example. We will need to add the reference to the project. We have removed some of the alignment and size attributes to make it appear full screen. We will call this object as chart. In this way, we will be able to access to the chart in the code behind. Since we added a new reference, let's build the solution once and to update the XML designer. Let's move on the setting up the chart. Before we begin, let's add some action usings. Let's start by writing an initialization method. Before starting any initialization work, we will add the begin update and the end update functions to this method. With this statement, we tell to the chart that there is now an out of block batch update, and this allows the chart to not update after each chart property or component is changed. This avoids high CPU and memory consumption, making it more efficient to update many graphics properties at once. Let's extract the chart XY view to update the axis. We will add some methods here to set the X and Y axis. So, let's start with the X axis. Since we will be creating an entirely new axis, let's remove the existing default axis using the axis clear function. We will name this axis as X values. We'll set a range, 0 to 100, and finally, we will add this x-axis to the chart using the axis add function. Now that we have our x-axis set up, let's move on to the y-axis. The y-axis will set a range from minus 100 to 100, and we will add the axis. Now that the two axes are set up and added to the chart surface, let's talk about adding the actual line for our data. Let's start by creating a line series using the Point Line Series tool. Point Line Series takes three parameters, the view, the owner, the x-axis and the y-axis. For the x and y-axis, we can extract them directly from the chart, and since we only have one axis, we can directly access to it by passing the zero index, similarly for the y axis, and for the view, we can simply pass the view from the previous method. Now, let's customize our chart a little bit. Let's start by disabling a point rendering by setting the points visible to false. This will give us a nice smooth line without any dots. Let's add some color to this. The color property, Line Series Line Style Color, takes any color object, but Lining Charts provides some default colors that we can use for this. Finally, let's add and this to the table. And with that, our Line Series is now configured and initialized. We need to add some points to this line series. We will use the dispatcher timer object. We will create this timer ticking every 10 milliseconds. 
let's add a tick timer and start the timer. We will add a new collection of series points. For this demo, we'll only be adding one point at a time. So we need to create just one tick of series points and one X and Y coordinate. For the X coordinate, we have an incremental value. So let's just initialize the points added variable with a zero value. For the Y coordinate, let's use a random number from the random number generator. Now, we just need to add these points to the chart. An additional parameter here is the invalidate chart. We'll set it to false, as we'll be updating our chart at the end. Since we are updating the chart, we will add the begin update and the end update chart methods. Since we have created and configured the X and Y axis and the line series, we also add an update mechanism that runs every 10 milliseconds to fit new data into the chart. Now, let's compile and see how it goes. So, as you can see, gradually along the left side, new data is added every 10 milliseconds. And if I scroll to the inside, I should be able to see the data more clearly. However, if I notice that the new data is not scrolling in the view, enable scrolling along the x-axis. In the configure x-axis method, let's write x-axis.scroll mode. There are several scroll modes supported by the lightning chart. Sweep, scroll, and a step. Let's take this to the next level and try adding multiple data channels to the same chart. For this, I will initialize the variable series count with the value 5. We will create multiple Y axis for each data channel. So, for this, we will replicate this code inside a loop. We also need to configure the layout for this Y axis. Now that we have several axes for our data, let's add several series of lines by using another loop. So, since we have common X axis, we'll only have one here, but we have multiple Y axis. So, let's find the appropriate axis for this channel and we'll have multiple colors for each line. Now that we also have multiple strings of lines, let's update our time tick event handler. Here we have a simple loop. I moved the data generation code into this loop. So for each series, a random set of data is generated and added to its appropriate series of dotted lines. So now, let's build and run this application. As you can see, we have five data channels, each represented by their own y-axis. Each can be distinguished by different color, and if you zoom in, we can see the actual data scrolling as it is added. With this, we end this tutorial. With this demo, you have seen how easy it is to plot large data sets very efficiently with lining charts. Thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next video. This is Omar and goodbye.